Hello drone racers, today we're going to take a really quick look at a couple things I have done to the Lizard since flying it around a lot and mainly look at the camera. The camera on the Lizard isn't great but it's really unique because it's capable of both 25 and 100 milliwatt. The problem is it's really hard to tell how to do it. So we're going to play with the camera a little bit. I'm going to show you what it does, what the buttons do, how to get it to 100 milliwatts and see if it makes any difference at all anyway. I thought about putting new props on this, but I decided what the heck. These are the gym fan props that I've been testing so far so good. There will be a separate video on those specifically later, but I have crashed enough that I actually ripped one of these off. And these are really durable. They bend a lot more than they break. I still managed to rip one off. And the biggest highlight is nothing else on the lizard has broken at all. I mean, I haven't cracked an arm. I haven't broken an arm. I haven't broken anything. It is amazingly durable. I am shocked. And some people have said to take these off because it won't protect these the antennas anyway. You know what, mine is just fine. They're a little whopper jaw now that I look at them, but they're still working. I still have good video signal wherever I need to go without a problem at all. One other thing I've done is replace the Velcro. The Velcro that comes with it is terrible. It's virtually worthless. It doesn't stick at all. So it's a little hard to get out. I got it out and replaced it with a longer strip that'll pull over and that will attach a whole lot better. I've not figured out a great way still to get this Velcro on this side. I've got double stick tape, several layers stuck in here, but it doesn't stay on. So I'm still working on that. It may require super glue. But if you found a way to get this Velcro to stick, let me know in the comments down below, because I'm really curious. That's probably been the weakest point. And if that's the weakest point, that's saying a lot. Now with the Velcro, I don't have any problem with it holding things in place. I also have tried bigger batteries. I have an 850 milliamp battery on its way. This is an 1100 that someone gave to me. It's actually from one of those vapor mod things. And I saw it sitting there and said, hey, that's a big battery. And that has an XT30 on it and a balance connector. And what's that for? And they gave me a couple of them. So I tested this last night. And even with this 1100 30C, we think it's 30C. We were told it's 30C. Um, it did really well. The motors got a little bit warm. If I flew a whole bunch of packs through it, I'm not sure what would happen. I haven't gotten that far yet, but the extra weight, I will say, makes freestyle on this a whole lot better. I am a terrible freestyler. I don't know how to do anything yet. I'm just learning myself, but I found once I put this heavy battery on it, all of a sudden I could do a whole bunch of things and carry a whole bunch of weight into some flips and rolls that I couldn't do before. So I definitely like the big battery. So you actually get a look behind the scenes of everything I shove off this table when I need to record. We'll get it cleaned up eventually, but stuff's coming in too fast. I wanna get stuff done. There's no time to clean. Anyway, you should actually start with the manual. The manual for the Lizard is really good. It, it's way better than most of what we've seen. And the part about the camera is actually really good too. We have a table that includes all the channels and frequencies and whatnot, but these switches describe what happens pretty well. And the front button that you've got here on the camera actually changes it between NTSC and PAL. So because this is a versatile camera and it's not just for the lizard, the short touch of the front one will actually reverse the camera. So there we flipped it upside down. So if you are mounting this upside down in something else, it will still work. And we'll flip that back. You need to know that because you're gonna accidentally have that happen while you try and do these other changes. So if you hold down for two seconds, you'll actually switch and my cam, my goggles will automatically switch between NTSC and PAL, but we should be able to see a difference on the video between the two modes. So I'm not sure which is which at the moment as I'm recording, but you'll be able to sell, tell a difference there and you can decide which one you want it to be in. So there, hold it down and it switched. So I can see even in just looking through the goggles that there is a difference. So that's the front switch. The back switch changes the channels and frequency, much like you traditionally have. There you can see I'm on frequency one, channel two. And I'm only on channel two because I've accidentally pressed that back button and changed off of channel one. But it's the light works pretty well to be able to see what you're doing there. The hard part, is we'll see if you can see it here there we go right there on the left see that one light that one led lit right here tells you that it's on 25 milliwatt so to change that to 100 milliwatts you actually have to press down both of these buttons here at the same time for one second and it's kind of hard to do so what i've done is i've taken a screwdriver or here i've got a paintbrush and 
I try and tilt on one, press down the other one, and hold it down for two seconds, for one second. So there we go, I got it. Haha, <laughs> first try. So there, now you see on the left, there are two lights. The far left light, which is the brighter of those two lights, is lit up. Now I'm on 100 milliwatts transmission. I did some testing last night to see how much of a difference it makes. So we'll take a look at that footage in just a second. So one of the things to check after you do that is check your channels and frequency to make sure you didn't accidentally change it. Make sure your goggles work and you're still in the right mode because it's pretty easy to accidentally switch something else in that process. And if you do, it's, it's easy just to follow the manual. The back one, single click changes the channel. Long click changes the frequency band. So I tested this last night. I actually recorded it with three sets of goggles because I'm doing a goggle review at the same time. Like, let's kill two birds with one stone. I'm gonna show you the worst of the videos. And unfortunately, it's the one that I was wearing. So the other goggles still looked really good. The ones I was wearing looked bad and we're breaking up so I had to turn around. I flew the same path with both the 25 and the 100 and you're gonna see them look like they break up about the same time. But afterwards, if you look, the 25 milliwatt is way ahead and that's because it's actually dropped all of the frames. You don't see it. So the 25 is almost all the way back to my house. The 100 is just turned around. So it did make it further. So there you go. I would say the 100 milliwatt is worth it most of the time, but it doesn't make a huge difference. If I'm flying in my backyard, I'm gonna leave it on 25 because that setting doesn't stick. You have to redo it every time. And for the most part where I'm flying, it's fine. If I was going out and flying on a racetrack and doing a timed run, which you could totally do with the Lizard and compete with some of the bigger quads, I think. For that, I would change it to 100 milliwatt just to make sure I have the best video signal possible. I could see where the line was. It made a little bit of difference. Uh, I did some other tests and the penetration is a little bit better with the 100 also, but I'm concerned the camera might burn up a little faster. So I'm gonna leave it on 25 milliwatt most of the time and I think it will be just fine for me. If you find this useful, subscribe. Leave a comment down below with whatever else you want me to test. There's more tests coming for the Lizard, but I wanted to get this one out there for everybody. And while you're doing that, you might as well like it too. While you're at it, there's a giveaway going pretty much all the time now. I've got so much stuff that I've gone through, I don't have room for it all, so there's a link for that down in the description below that should take you to the current contest, even if you're seeing this six months after it was published. But until next time, remember, who needs a five inch when this thing's so fast?